Hello, good afternoon. I'm Walter Tupas of Move PH Raptor Civic Engagement Arm. Yesterday, Sunday, July 16, the National Anti Poverty Commission launched its flagship anti um, poverty reduction um, program called Kilos Sambayanan. Um, and it's not only a list of basic needs of the poor, but also a call to action. And joining us today is the lead convener of NAPSI, Secretary Lisa Massa. Good afternoon, Secretary. Yes, good afternoon, Volte. How was it yesterday? Um, can you uh, give us an overview of what happened? It was a very successful launching of Kilo Sambayanan. It was held in Del Pan, Binondo. Uh, we were right there among the, uh, the people of, uh, of uh, Binondo, of Del Pan. And uh, the members of the uh, Human Development and Poverty Reduction Cluster, Cabinet Cluster, were there, and um, the it was actually also an information caravan, because there is um, because we realized that there is a, a low access rate for government uh, services, and that's why the, the the objective of this information caravan is to be able to bring you know, the services to the people and for them to know that there are indeed these kinds of programs and projects and services being undertaken by the various agencies of government, mm -hmm. and they should access it. No? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but Kilo Sambayanan is a flagship um, project of mm -hmm. uh, National Anti-Poverty Commission. Mm -hmm. It is uh, a call to converge and provide the, the, the services for the 10 basic needs of the poor. Mm -hmm. Bako natin pag-usapan in detail yung mga components ng program. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can discuss uh, a little bit more about your agency. What does it do? Uh, um, what can we expect from your commission? Well, the, the NAPC uh, is tasked to coordinate, monitor, and do oversight mm -hmm. uh, functions in relation to uh, poverty alleviation programs and mm -hmm. projects and the social reform agenda. Mm -hmm. So um, we interpreted this as, uh, you know, really doing work on the ground, monitoring um, the uh, implementation of the uh, uh, various uh, poverty alleviation projects that are large uh, in the various departments and agencies of government. And since we all do oversight, so um, necessarily one of our functions will be on policy advocacy internally. Mm -hmm. no? So um, the other part of our work is to be able to engage the, the participation of the 14 basic sectors mm -hmm. in governance mm -hmm. and uh, we add also in, in development. Mm -hmm. no? So we, um, we um, build you know, and develop the capability of, uh, of the 14 basic sectors um, so that they can engage effectively in, in governance. If they have uh, agenda, uh, we have the ANBA, uh, which is composed of the 14 uh, agencies of government, the LGU, um, the, the president of uh, the leagues of uh, government uh, units from the uh, provincial to the barangay level and then we have the representatives of the 14 basic sectors in other words comprise the anbang my clout yung, oh, oh. yung commission and oh. and this is uh, chaired by the president himself hmm. so okay. you know uh, executive orders memo from the president can come out from this hmm. uh, anbang meeting has the pres um, president been supportive of the uh, oh, commission. Oh yes. After uh, a year, it's been a year since yeah, it's he been assumed a year. power. Um, actually, in the last administration, the Anbank was never, you know, uh, the, uh, the Anbank never met. Okay. <laughs> it was not convened. convened. But uh, he, now the president said that he wants a monthly meeting of the Anbank. Mm. So so far we had two already, mm. um, and um, we expect that uh, the meetings you know will be regularized mm -hmm. and uh, it will be a more productive uh, mm -hmm. napsi uh, in especially in relation to uh, to uh, you know uh, programs projects that would address the multi-dimensional aspects of poverty let's talk about the program itself mm -hmm. there are 10 basic needs what are these 
Well, actually, this uh, 10 basic needs, hmm. itong kilos uh, sambayanan or, or kilos para sa sampung matayang pangangailangan, this 10 basic needs came from the consultation last October that uh, NAPSI, ano, no? that NAPSI uh, sponsored or conducted. And, um, and the sectors said that, you know, uh, we need this. These are, the, these are our needs uh, that the government should provide. No? So, largely, mga services yan, at saka environment, para, ano, para, um, para matugunan yung iba't ibang aspeto ng kahirapan. So, this will be food and land reform, water, shelter, work, mm -hmm. education, health, mm -hmm. uh, social protection, healthy environment, peace and participation. Okay. And because also the advocacy of NAPSI is that we should look at the poverty it's in, in its multidimensional forms. Mm -hmm. no? Hindi lang ito sa pinang, ay pag ang income mo is ano, 9,000, um, so nasa ano ka, kung below 9,064, ano ka na, uh, kasama ka na doon sa, ano, doon sa tinatawag na mahirap. Mm -hmm. O di kaya pagka below 6,329, nandoon ka na sa mga, ano, no, nandoon ka na sa mga nagugutom. Uh, pero hindi ganun yan. Yung poverty may iba't iba pa rin aspeto. Eh. Like for example, do you have, you know, a safe place to stay and, uh, you know, a house, no? Or um, a shelter, di ba? Uh, Mapayapa ba yung kapaligiran mo? Healthy ba yung environment? May tubig ba? Because right now, for example, there are still about 322 waterless municipalities mm. in, the, in the country mm. and about 3.3 um, uh, million mm. you know, Filipinos without access to water. Okay. So, in other words, itong sinasabi mong multidimensional yung approach dapat. And when we see figures like 20 million Filipinos are poor, um, this is basically um, related to to income. Yeah, they, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. Oo. Hindi, so, pa yung iba pa. hindi pa yung ibang aspeto. Okay. Uh -huh. no? Kung titignan mo pa yung ibang aspeto, baka uh -huh. mas malaki uh -huh. pa. Pero bumagsak according to figures mm -hmm. from, from... From about 26, 26 to 20. To 20. To um, is that a good uh, indicator? No. Well, uh, well, I would like to think that it's a good mm -hmm. indicator, pero may iba't ibang mga ano, no, na aspeto. No? Mm -hmm. Like 2015, uh, syempre election year is 2016. Mm -hmm. And usually, pagka election year, o di kaya malapit sa election, talagang bumababa yung poverty incidence. Mm -hmm. no? So we still have to, and over time, actually yung, yung definition ng poverty at saka yung indicators niyan, at saka paano kayo compute, talagang medyo kailangan pa natin kinisen kasi over time, nag iba, -iba yung, ano yung mga sangkap sa kung paano mo measure yung poverty. Ano? Mm -hmm. Let, okay. Let's start with hunger, dahil pagkain yung unang agenda nyo. Ano? Um, nearly 2.7 million families yung so, nakaranas ng gutom according to your data. Um, how exactly are you going to address this problem under your Kilo Sambayan actually, program? Actually, it's even more. No? Mm -hmm. Kasi according to PSA data, mm -hmm. Philippine Statistics Authority, mm -hmm. about 8.23 million mm -hmm. ang hindi... Families uh, to or oh, individuals? Oh, individuals. Ang hindi talaga mm -hmm. nakaka... Ano, no, yung walang access sa adequate food or hindi sila talaga sapat yung pagkain nila. So, paano ito ay address uh, Siyempre, uh, with food, kailangan talaga niyan yung pagpapaundan ng ating agrikultura. Isang, isang ano yan talaga, ano? Isang batayan yan na uh, requirement so we can you, have sustainable yeah. food. So, and that is why we are, um, we are, uh, we find it very, very good for our food security and, and mm. ano, food production, agricultural production, itong programa para sa free irrigation. The Department no? of Agriculture yeah, is, the, the is, Department of, is part the Department of this initiative? Of agriculture is implementing that. Okay. No? Mm. Tapos yung, yung initiatives at saka yung, yung ginagawa ni Secretary Paeng Mariano sa Department mm. of Agriculture, mm. agrarian reform mm. is also uh, within the, ano, the objective of sustainable food, yung land reform. Mm. No? And because uh, that is very basic, if we really have to uh, have uh, sustainable food supply, we have to improve our agriculture at ang isang kailangang ano doon pag uh, ayusin ay yung pagpapasakamay ng, sa mga magsasaka ng lupa. At hindi lang yon yung mga suporta like irrigation, yung mga 
uh, farm inputs, mm. no, yung mga seeds, etc. Mm. So, yun yung ano, yun yung sa agriculture at saka sa, sa, agriculture at sa, sa food. food. Next ay too big. At least 3.3 families naman yung walang access sa too malinis big. na uh, too big na pwedeng oh. mainom. Um, how are you going to address this problem? Actually, since even hmm. during the last administration, NAPS has been involved hmm. In uh, with the DILG mm. and uh, the local water authorities uh, for the implementation of mm. saline too big, we do mm. the social preparation. Mm. No? Uh, saline too big aims to, ano, uh, to uh, uh, really um, bring water to the waterless uh, municipalities and also to the, ano, uh, not only for drinking but also mm. for health sanitation. No? Mm. So that program is uh, being uh, continued by by uh, DILG, and we are also a part of it. Mm. Do you have a special intervention well, for disaster victims? Because yung palagi ang problema too big sa Zurigao, ngayon uh -oh. sa Marawi at sa Kasaydigan. Yeah. Um, yung palagi ang um, kakulangan yung tubig. Uh -huh. Meron ba kayong particular program? Yes. For? Actually, we are really looking at alternatives. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, last week, or two mm -hmm. weeks ago, I was in Bacolod and I saw this uh, uh, social enterprise and mm -hmm. they are producing ram pumps. Mm -hmm. no? okay. Which is a very, very, I think, very, very good idea mm -hmm. because it, low cost. Mm -hmm. No, and you can put that in the remote areas mm -hmm. and you can access water and bring it to the, uh, to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and another thing, uh, also combining, um, combining uh, environment, mm -hmm. uh, I'm also in contact with uh, an NGO that is uh, advocating for community-based mm -hmm. renewable energy system. Mm -hmm. And I think it is also a very good idea to support these uh, initiatives on the ground. Mm -hmm. Kasi yung ating kasing uh, orientation, di ba? Mm -hmm. Pag yung development, pag yung pagpapaunod ng yung big time agad. Pero doon sa mga big time agad, mm -hmm. lagi may naiiwan. Mm -hmm. no? So walang focused uh, program uh, para doon sa mga, hindi, hindi kanyang sumakay doon sa grid. Mm -hmm. O di okay. kaya nagiging masyadong mahal yung kuryente. Maraming off-grid pa rin. Yes, at, at, mar at mumamahal yung kuryente. Mm -hmm. So there are efforts on the ground, yung community-based uh, renewable energy system that can provide um, water and electricity, mm -hmm. not only to the household, pero sa economic activity. And I think mm -hmm. that's a very good uh, you know, model mm -hmm. na pwedeng i-implement sa mga remote areas, sa mga unserved and underserved uh, communities. No? Uh, para talaga yung kombinasyon ng malalaki maliliit pwede natin pagsamahin not to mention that not to mention everything. that these efforts help in reducing um, carbon yes, uh, exactly. uh, oh. emission oh. Oh. yeah and well nabanggit mo na yung uh, energy sa environment tayo puntahan natin um, isa sa mga objectives niyo ay uh, isang environment na safe at saka malinis okay. tell us more about it well, yes. So, actually, just this morning, um, I was um, I attended the uh, the environment report uh, that was um, initiated by an NGO, uh, Eco Challenge. It's called an Eco Challenge Alliance. Mm -hmm. no? So they were really looking at the you know at the issues, uh, many issues about the uh, environment, the mining, the mm -hmm. ano yung Bawa sa greening, greening uh, program ng gobyerno, ano ba yung dapat itanim at ang sinasabi nila dapat magtanim ng mga mga puno na endemic sa atin at uh, ano no yung o di kaya mapapakinabangan din ng mga komunidad like yung mga fruit bearing trees you know all those things at uh, kasama yon kasi uh, doon niya sa Anbank meeting namin, pwede mag-produce ng ano eh, executive orders, memorandum from the president, etc. So we will all be bringing, you know, these uh, proposals there at uh, in the hope na ano, no, ma-adapt ma or, or mabigyan ng importansya, ma-implement yung ilang mga magaganda naman na ginagawa na sa ground. O di kaya yung mga policy advocacy sa pili na address uh, like for example, in relation to environment, yung environmental degradation, mm -hmm. you know, and all these things. And in relation to that, yung disaster risk reduction efforts, um, are you supporting 
um, actually yung, yung NAPSI is uh, ano is uh, a member uh, of the uh, NDRRMC uh, no uh, uh, lalo na yung aming yung aming uh, isa sa mga basic sectors namin uh, yung victims of disasters uh, and calamities uh, na naka umuupo doon uh, at nag intervene para sa interest ng mga victims of disaster uh, identified sila as one of the of the 14 ba basic sectors, 14 basic sectors uh -huh. which include uh, uh, women, the women, youth, youth uh, farmers, fisher folk, indigenous people, uh, indigenous people, mm. senior citizens, mm. uh, NGOs, co-op, mm -hmm. um, person with disabilities, okay. mm -hmm. yung informal sector, mm -hmm. uh, um, formal labor and mm -hmm. migrants, mm -hmm. at saka yung mm -hmm. ano. And they are all represented yeah. sa NAPSI? Sa, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Next ay yung pabahay. Medyo mataas yung backlog natin yes. um, in terms ng units. Ano, 2.2 million units uh, at least ng 2016 and around 6.8 yung uh, nakikita ang pangilang between 2017 and 2022. So, ang laki ng challenge. Uh, how, do you, how would you deal with that? Oh, yeah. Of course, we have the housing units, mm -hmm. yung HUDCC, NHA, etc. Mm -hmm. that uh, really... Um, uh, you know, have the mandate to uh, to directly implement projects in relation to housing. Yung sa amin naman yung policy, no? So yung yung policy actually we have been advocating for for um, free housing. Doon sa mga sa 20% na talagang hindi hindi uh, kakayanin na bumili ng bahay halimbawa o magrenta, you know. For us, siguro yung mga nagsusweldo ng minimum, baka yung 500, tingin nila. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken, chicken lang yan para sa kanila, no? Mm -hmm. Pero para doon talaga sa mga mga ngalakal mm -hmm. na kung magkano lang ang kinikita, minsan 50 pesos lang, o di kaya wala pang kita sa isang araw, talagang kahit yung limandaan, hindi nila kaya. O kahit yung 250, hindi nila kaya. Kaya... Ang sinasabi namin, bakit hindi natin tingnan ang housing as ano, as serbisyo. Mm -hmm. 'Di ba? Mm -hmm. Hindi yung parang ano, parang kailangan mong bayaran. Mm -hmm. Pero um, 'di ba nag ano naman tayo, nagtatayo rin naman tayo ng mga roads and bridges as services mm -hmm. to the people. Bakit hindi rin yung bahay, mm -hmm. 'di ba? And then of course may kombinasyon niya, merong pwede rin na merong doon naman sa mga pwedeng magbayad. Na, pero mahirap pa rin sila, pwedeng mas mura yung mortgage. O di kaya pwede rin mag na mas mura. So, ganun yung mga ano, pwedeng gawin. But others have opted to occupy houses like Oo. Kadama and you were part of uh, of the team that visited mm -mm. the areas. Ano, um, mm -mm. Yeah, well, yun na nga. Maybe it was uh, really, ano, no? Uh, timely yung ginawa nilang action kasi it, that actually really underscored the fact that we have this very huge kasi itong mga main problem uh, si nagiging problema eh no? kanila yung lupa at uh, ano yan isang malalim na kaya na uh, ang mga ano natin, ano, eh, mga informal set. Mm -hmm. Mabigat pa rin sa mga pamilya lang na pagpapit ng maluba yung mga... Well, isang rason kasi dyan yung privatization mm -hmm. na ano, ating mga public opponents yan na ano, yung... Mm -hmm. ...problem on our health. Um, well, address. So, yesterday, doon sa aming kilos, Sabayanan, ito nga yung sinabi rin ng Department of Health, na hindi na lang konsulta yung libre, meron na rin silang mga libreng operasyon. No? And I think that is a good step. At ang pangatlo, na importante, yun na nga, yung mahirap kung may pata ka ng pang-privatize ng hospitals, na alam naman natin, syempre, pag nagiging private na, iba na yung ano doon, ano, tumataas na yung hospitalization at saka yung mga services dyan. Kaya dapat talaga i-maintain natin yung ano yung public hospitals at magtayo pa tayo ng mas marami mm -hmm. no na hospitals lalo na doon sa mga remote areas mm -hmm. ah, sa barangay at least yung, yung uh, clinics, health centers, oh, health centers. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. at yung doctors or nurses and midwives at least oh. wala bang intervention na paramihin well, 
Well, merong, merong program mm -hmm. para sa ganon. Mm -hmm. uh, si uh, Secretary Ubyal. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. So, um, sana ma-pursue mm -hmm. yung ganon at uh, matugunan yung ating mga pangangailangan para sa doktor at sa, mm -hmm. sa mga health workers. At uh, siguro, maitaas na rin yung kanilang sahod ano? mm -hmm. para hindi sila maingganyo mm -hmm. na pumunta pa sa abroad mm -hmm. para magtrabaho. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of sahod, sahod naman ng mga magagawa. Mga magagawa, isa rin sa mga key promises ni Pangulo. Unfortunately, 18.2% ng mga magagawang um, uh, wage earners ano, ay um, walang katiyakan yung kanilang trabaho. Ano mga particular programs niyo for those whose work uh, jobs are at risk? Well, ang um, isang, uh, well, of course, alam na naman natin yung isang problema, yung contractualization, contractualization mm -hmm. no? or di kayong endo. So, ang NAPSI naman, uh, together with our uh, formal labor uh, and migrant sector, ay, uh, ay uh, nagkakaisa para doon sa pagtatanggal na nga ng ENDO dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya meron ng mga, mga resolutions at saka, at saka hakbang yung aming formal labor sector, one of the basic sectors din namin, para doon sa kaugnay ng, ano, kaugnay ng contractualization. Tapos yung isa pa, kaya uh, talagang advocacy rin namin kasi it can never, never really create jobs. Yeah. Kung patuloy tayo na hindi natin pinapaunlad yung ating, ano, yung ating industry, mm -hmm. kailangan talaga ng national industrialization, mm -hmm. kailangan natin paunlad rin mm -hmm. ang ating manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. Hindi dapat na ano, naka, nakatali lang sila doon sa ano, no, export processing zones mm -hmm. o di kaya doon sa mga maliliit mm -hmm. na mga enterprises. We really have to develop our own basic in the basic steel industry, no? Para nang sa ganon ay makapag-create tayo ng more jobs. Pero mukhang hindi yun ang direction ng administration at this point, at least in the in the short run. But I understand it's part of the ongoing peace process. In fact, it's part of the comprehensive agreement on social economic reforms or CASER. Kaya lang na suspend yung peace talks, and you were part of of that. And in fact, you were sent. Home after my suspense. So, how do you? How would you move forward? I mean, it's it's a goal, but in the near future, you don't see that happening. Or are you still optimistic? Well, in relation, well, of course, in relation to the peace talks, I am optimistic. In relation to this developing our economy, the two pillars of our economy, because agriculture and industry, di ba? So, kailangan talaga pa ulari nyan. Uh, hindi talaga ayan ang naging ano naging pa ng lahat ng naging maunlad na bansa no? of course with due regard to our environment di ba uh, but then uh, i think one of the approaches at ito nga yung nagiging papel naman ng aming prototyping no kasi we all do, do proto prototyping uh, as a living advocacy di ba at uh, ngayon meron kaming Uh, prototyping na ginagawa, alibawa, or, or na kino-contemplate, no? Um, dahil siguro, baka late, middle of this, ano pa, or, or baka mga third quarter of this year, mga full, ano namin ito, full implementation. Pero, ang the idea is that we should be able to, ano, to uh, increase the value of our agricultural output, mm. no? Mm. So, alimbawa, kung coconut yan, uh, hindi na lang copra, mm. di ba? So, ano pa yung mga uh, byproducts of mm. coconut, mm. i-develop natin. And if you can set up factories, mm. siguro ngayon maliit pa lang. Meron mm. na namang mga ganyan, pero dapat paramihin pa natin. Mm. At, uh, for example, setting up factories right there on the field, on, mm. on the plantation, di ba? Mm. Or doon sa lupa mismo kung saan doon mo na ipoprocess yung, yung, yung produce nung ano mo, mm. nung iyong agriculture, mm. ay isang napaka gandang bagay mm. and that will gain a social um, experience, mm. di ba? As a nation, mm. para ano, para sa in industrialization. Para mas ma-visualize ng mga nanonood, uh, mayroon bang particular community that uh, this particular intervention right is now, happening? We are looking at the uh, community in Bohol, mm farming community, they, they are uh, coconut farmers, tapos meron na rin silang planta, mm -hmm. they produce 
uh, virgin coconut oil. Okay. Ngayon, gusto namin paramihin pa yung product nila. No? Kasi we can also produce uh, good quality soy sauce or you know, parang, parang coconut soy, parang ganon. At saka iba pang products. No? Uh, pwede, pwede rin from the coconut task, pwede mag ano eh, yung mga yung mga mattress, pwede rin yun. No? So, marami na pwede nating likain. No? Kaugnay ng coconut. At uh, pag ginawa natin yon pag tayo mismo nagpo-produce, yung value ng ating ng output ng ating mga coconut farmers, mas tumataas. And by the way, yung mga coconut farmers ang, ang pinakamahirap sa ating mga magsasaka. Since modeling to, um, I assume yung objective nyo ay to scale up in the long run. You're looking at how many years bago to ma-develop ang isang community para sabihin ito ay good prototype. Well, of course, ano yan eh, syempre, mm -hmm. kung para tingnan mo kung ano yung impact niyan doon sa poverty alleviation, will take about will, will take some time, di ba? Kasi marami pa yan, yung marketing, et cetera, et cetera, kailangan mo rin ayusin. At saka, syempre, kailangan mo tingnan, hindi naman dapat yung buong ano mo eh, buong sistema mo, di ba? At saka yung buong economic direction mo ang mm -hmm. maayos. Mm -hmm. Pero just to set up something like that, maybe we can ano, we can set up two years mm -hmm. siguro. Mm -hmm. Tapos tingnan natin kung paano siya pauwi na rin. Mm -hmm. At uh, para mag doon na gusto niyo yung peace talk sa Limbawa. Well, mm -hmm. well oo. Yes, also. Kasi... How do you push? Actually, marami. Mm -hmm. uh, within the, ano, the different agencies, mm -hmm. ang sumusuporta sa ano, peace talks. Mm -hmm. Kaya yung tingin ko pagpatuloy ng peace talks, so peace talks per se, mm -hmm. ay nakaka-enjoy mm -hmm. ng malawak na support mm -hmm. no? uh, sa, sa loob at labas ng gobyerno. Mm -hmm. Kaya... I don't see any impediment in mm. pursuing it. Mm. Uh, and, and besides, looking at the various, the different peace negotiations sa ibang bansa, talagang, mm. ano yan, masalimuot talaga yan. <laughs> at saka, yeah. ano, no, ganito talaga yung, mm. ano, yung mm. nagiging mm. karanasan. We just have to be, you know, patient mm. with all this. But do you think the president listens to the progressive bloc there? Oo naman. Palagay ko, na, na, nakikinig pa naman mm. siya sa amin. Mm. And besides, alam naman niya na meron kaming mga daladalang uh, ganitong mga ideya, mga proposals, mga pagtingin. And I think uh, precisely, uh, kaya kami kinuha siguro niya, di ba? Ay dahil doon din sa aming mga pwedeng i-input doon sa, sa ano, pag-aayos ng ating bansa. Let's take a few questions. Ano? Siyempre yung common na question number one dyan yung yung kung saan, kailang, kung saan ka na-associate for the longest time yung sa women's movement and it's uh, it's a it's a distinct uh, position where you are dahil for instance the president usually makes um, rape jokes or insensitive jokes how do you deal with that you're an advocate of women's rights oh i'm always sleepless after <laughs> <laughs> but then of course have uh, you confronted him before well, ano naman yan, kahit doon sa Davao, yung aming mga, ano, ano yan eh, parang love-hate relationship mm -hmm. <laughs> ng Gabriela with the President. And uh, Gabriela always, ano naman, uh, 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 calls his attention mm -hmm. no? doon sa mga ganong klaseng rape joke. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, also encourage him doon sa mga positibo rin naman yung ginagawa, mm -hmm. like no persona niya, di ba? He, really also stressed yung Magna Carta, uh, Magna Carta for Women, na ito na yung embodiment ng mga rights na kailangang irespeto ng lahat, lalo na ng, ng gobyerno bilang duty bearer. No? Uh, kaugnay ng pag-recognize, pag at uh, pangangalaga at uh, pagsasaktuparan ng karapatan ng kababaihan. Okay. Um, in terms of Uh, the participation naman ng uh, publiko. Isang question dito ay uh, from, from our Facebook Live, si JC Pakulan, isa siyang sudyante. Gusto niyang tumulong. Um, sabi niya, how can students like him help in pursuing your agenda? Yes. Well, meron po kaming platforma na tinayo mm -hmm. nung 
tayo po ay umupo, yung tinatawag naming uh, uh, partnerships for change. So, yung pong mga may magagandang ideya, may mga mungkahi, may meron nga lumalapit sa mga scientists, yung mga mga nasa business sector, church groups, na sinasabi may idea sila, may ginagawa sila tungkol doon sa mga problema. And um, we gathered this doon sa aming partnerships for change. Kinukuha namin yung mga idea nila kung merong gustong mag-contribute ng whatever, uh, ano rin, very welcome din. And also, yun naman pong mga NGO, ay uh, meron din po kaming ano, uh, plataforma para sa kanila. Ito nga pong, ito nga pong sectoral representation ng aming 14 basic sectors. At sa November po, magkakaroon kami ng uh, National Sectoral Assembly at nananawagan kami doon sa mga organization. If you want to engage and we encourage you to engage with NAPSI, ay uh, pwede po kayong mag sumulat, magpalista at sabihin na interesado kayong sumama. Meron po kami i-anunsyo na ano yung mga kriteriya sa pag-participate doon. At uh, pwede po kayong ano, no, yung mga issues nyo sa cultural agenda. But then, of course, there are limitations. No? Yung, mismong, yung, yung mismong venue mo, limited eh. No? Um, and then, you have to deal with many people. No? Especially since ang approach na inadapt which is uh, good, positive, yung convergence approach. But of course, that will also convergence with, ano, no, with the, the various agencies, private sector, etc. But uh, most especially with the, with, with the different departments and agencies din ng gobyerno. So, uh, may ganung process. And, and um, kailangan ano, mag-agree rin sila doon sa mga iniisip mo. No? So, may mga ganun. And... Uh, and uh, ang, ang isa pa is that I think we should be able to reach out more doon sa mga basic sectors para talaga ma-reflect yung kanilang agenda no? broadly no? Yung, yung broad na, ano, na mga organisasyon from different you know persuasions mm. para makapag uh, input sila dito sa ano dito sa usapin ng pag-gobyerno at pag-unlad at pagbabago ng ating bansa. Mm. Uh, sa dami ng mga ano na yon ng mga organizations na yan palagay ko hindi pa namin natatap lahat. Mm. Okay. And we have to do more. Mm. And we really have to you know, articulate effectively yung agenda nila. Kaya nga gusto ko ng ano, na, na himukin yung mga organisasyon na lumapit sa NAPSI at uh, ano, tingnan ang oportunidad, tingnan yung NAPSI bilang plataforma doon sa pag ano, pursue ng kanilang mga agenda. Okay. Satisfied ka naman sa team mo that will help you pursue that? Kasi sa simula pa lang ng term mo ay naging controversial na yung pag-fire mo ng mga consultants. Ano? Umupa na ba? I just ended their contracts. Uh -huh. So, has it been so, resolved now? Okay na ba yung... Well, yes, I am very satisfied with my team. Um, contrary to what they feared, na lahat daw ng aking mga direktor ay gagawin kong makabayan, which is not true. Wala, walang makabayan member na mga direktor ko. Kaya... Ano, they are very, ano, ano, they are very excited. Kasi kahapon, uh, you know, they really work hard to make the launching of Kilo Sambayanan a success. Mm -hmm. It was. Kaya, okay. Well, on a lighter note, before we end, pa paano ka na nag-adjust sa buhay mong ito? For the longest time, nasa lansangan ka. Uh -oh. And then, for a short period, nasa Congress, and now this is different. Well, of course, may silip na tayo when I was in Congress, mm -hmm. no? Kasi that's another, nasa loob na yan. <laughs> Medyo loob na yan ng ano, uh, wala na sa lansangan. Pero ano, kasi I think it is also because basically, I still consider myself an activist. No? Kaya yung adjustment, maaaring I'm just adjustment doon sa, I'm just adjusting doon sa ano, doon sa, doon sa uh, platform na kinakalugaran ko ngayon. Pero, much of 
what I believe in at saka ano yung gustong kung mga paniniwala ko para sa bayan natin all those are still intact no? ano mga okay. non-negotiable na, sa iyo na lang, uh, hmm? ngayon um, while you are there syempre constantly I can only imagine it's a it's a struggle on a daily basis ano mga non-negotiable sa iyo sa natin ngayon, yung kasing kung bakit um uh, isang rason kung bakit naman ako pumayag mm -hmm. no doon sa sa posisyon ng pagliligo ko dino is because meron namang mga at a time mm -hmm. na nakikita na na windows of opportunity para doon sa reforms mm -hmm. no? yung magaganda yung mga pronouncement ng si presidente nung simula mm -hmm. um, Lagi niya say, just give me time. So, siguro, uh, ako personally, giving him time, kasi mahirap din talaga, no? Yung, yung governance sa ganitong klase ng sistema. At, uh, ang non-negotiable siguro, uh, ano, kung wala na talaga na espasyo para mag-institute mag ka pa ng mga reforma. Kung yung presidente mismo sabihin, ay nako, wala na. Yung mga sinabi ko na, <laughs> wag na. <laughs> Hindi na yun natingin ko ngayon. At, uh, ano, at, um, iba na talaga. Dati yon pero ngayon hindi na yan ang gusto ko. So, yun, no? Uh, in relation to land reform, kasi ano pa rin naman siya, strong pa rin siya doon sa land reform issue. At uh, doon sa, sa independent foreign policy, mm. ano naman, no? uh, sinasabi niya na he is pursuing it. Mm. At uh, totoo rin naman na binubukas niya mm. ngayon, yung bansa natin, hindi lamang sa, na naka-focus tayo doon sa US, mm. kung hindi sa iba pa rin ano, no? bansa na nakikipag-relay tayo. Um, especially economically. Kaya ano, kaya tingin ko uh, okay na okay talaga yung yung independent foreign policy. Uh, kailangan din na uh, yung mga serbisyo uh, lalo na doon sa kanayunan, yung rural and agricultural development importante talaga yun. At yung pa rin naman ang sinasabi niya na priority niya talaga. Uh, sa sa uh, ano no sa bunong panahon mm. ng panunukulan niya and finally if you will explain ki hashtag #kilos sa bayanan to to a millennial uh, to millennials who are watching now how would you uh, say it well, uh, kilos sa bayanan is mm. a call it's a challenge for all of us mm. especially to the youth mm. to contribute um, to the betterment mm. of the of others especially the poor Okay, on that note, thank you very much for joining us. We've been talking to Secretary Lisa Massa of the National Anti-Poverty Commission. Thank you for joining us. I'm Voltaire Tupas. Thanks. <laughs>